Welcome back to the show. Uh, let's get my next guest out. He's one half of the terrific Peep Show, a very funny comedian in his own right. It's Mr. David Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. David Mitchell, well, um, first of all, it's great to see you. It's great to have you on the show. Um, and the thing earlier when I mentioned about you not liking being recognised, is that the story behind the beard? Is that why you've grown this beard or is it...? Well, the main reason I grew this beard is that I'd never had a, you know, a proper go on my face before. Mm. You know, I never, it does a thing and I'd never let it do the thing. So just to see what your body could do? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Nothing, you know, I just strained every part of me and hair came out of my face. But <laughs> no, nothing else happened. But you're, you're shaping it a little bit. You're trimming some of the cheek area, I imagine? <laughs> I'm not trimming it. <laughs> no, no, this, this is a sign of good character. <laughs> it, it naturally grows neatly. <laughs> OK, uh, David has a book out uh, and it's a very... Uh, genuinely, it's a very funny read. Uh, David Mitchell backstory, and you might think that was about uh, just his life, but there is a very specific reason why it's called backstory, of course. W well, yes, it is, because uh, it's also it is a it's a it's a memoir. It's got hopefully it's got jokes in it. Yes. It's definitely got attempts at humour in it, <laughs> but also it's it's a self help guide because I. Um, I had a very bad back uh, for a long time. <laughs> and thank you. Um, people, I, I often get... That was an R, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little um, bit. And, uh, and so I, the thing that's sorted my back out is I walk for an hour every day. And that's totally sorted my back out. And so contained within that book are not only jokes, yeah. but the fact that I've just said, so actually there's no need to buy the book. Well, no, uh, because... <laughs> lot, but it also, what's clever about it, I think, is that it is very much... It's, it's written around these walks, or around one walk. It kind yeah. of takes you on a, an actual kind of almost a literal journey through London as you walk to fix your Mac. Uh, yes, indeed. A, a literal journey and a metaphorical journey <laughs> from... If you can imagine, I've come all the way from Salisbury in 1974 <laughs> to London in 2012, which, you know, it's an incredibly long journey. But I thought this is not me really judging you, but my first impression of you that you were probably a really, really, really weird child. <laughs> and yet, but now when you read the book, you realize you, you were quite a sweet, you were quite a normal little child. Really. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> yes, I mean... When I was a child, one of the things that I was oppressed by was the thought that I was a weird child. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be more normal. And I was, I was sort of into, you know, dressing up as people and pretending to be various incarnations of Time Lords or 18th century kings. You just look like a very sweet uh, little boy there. You're not... You're, are you wearing knickerbockers there? I'm not <laughs> sure. What I've done there, um, what I've done there in a way that I'm glad to hear you don't think is weird, is I've tucked my trousers into my socks so I look more like I'm wearing those sort of 18th century trousers and stockings <laughs> that I'd seen depicted on television and I thought to be quite the thing. <laughs> Uh, was this you, because uh, this is in the book, you, you wanted to be, or you liked the idea, uh, of being a king? That was... I, I, I loved pretending to be various authority figures in my own sort of mental universe. And that was, that was the game... Uh, that was the game I liked. I didn't like playing with Lego much. I didn't like playing football much. I liked sort of imagining I was, I was a king and I'd be giving orders to courtiers and starting wars and that sort of thing. <laughs> and other times I liked to imagine I was the captain of a spaceship <laughs> you know, I used to watch Star Trek a lot, and I'd sort of join in with Star Trek, so that if, you know, Captain Kirk said something, I'd go, yeah, that's a very good idea, but I think maybe we should uh, approach it differently. And I cast myself as, as Captain Kirk's boss. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about the, the bell you had with which you summoned orange juice. <laughs> You sound like orange juice was the name of my dog. Um, <laughs> no, there was a time at my grandparents' house. This was humiliatingly revealed on Would I Lie to You, by the way, when I had a little bell that I'd ring. Because they had a bell anyway, they didn't buy me the bell. The <laughs> bell was, existed in the house, and I took to ringing the bell, and my grandparents would then bring me some orange squash. Had you prearranged this with your grandparents, or did they just guess, well, he's ringing the bell, he must want something, and they reached for orange juice? I think it was sort of prearranged. It was mutual. And, I, and I think, yeah. I, d so I don't think it went on for a long time. I'm, I'm so... Well, well, I was such a fool to let this story get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did it end, then? Did they one day stop bringing you the juice when the bell was rung, or did it just... Well, uh, you know, they're, you they're, just felt they're dead aware? now. They're dead now. Oh, um, don't end the story they, that way. I don't, think, I don't think they died of exhaustion from bringing <laughs> uh, orange juice. But, um... Did you have to? I, I, the thing when I'm reading books, uh, famous people written, and it mentions other people, I often wonder, do you go to the trouble of running the stories past those other names? Did you 
check that it was okay. For example, your partner Robert Webb, when I say partner, I mean comedy partner, obviously. Uh, did you go past the, the stories in there with him first, or is this a surprise to him? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't run any stories past him. Um, but I'm basically, I'm, I'm sort of nice about him. I, I, think I, li I like him, so I'm Fair meant yeah. to be nice about him. If I've not been nice about him, it's, it, I actually lack the skills with which to express my liking. Here's exciting news. Uh, David's back quite soon, I'm not quite sure when, with a new series of Peep Show. I think it's November, is it? Yeah, yeah. next month. Yeah. I'm so excited about yeah. this. Um, because there was a period when it looked like they would not be making any more. And I remember talking to you once and you thought maybe it would come to yeah, the end. Yeah, I think they have that, uh, we had that period after almost every series that's gone out. Because <laughs> uh, I think people who watch it really like it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't watch it. Which, you know. Uh, we have a preview. No one's seen any of the footage yet, I believe, from no, the forthcoming series. I don't think I've seen this. Well, we yet, have a clip. So, we have a clip. Yeah. This is uh, David Nection, the new series of Peep Show. It'll be with you on Channel 4 in November. Look at this. I love Peep Show. <laughs> uh, that'll be with you in November. Yeah, it's a, very, uh, it's a very funny book. I'm very much enjoying it. And it kind of has a very happy ending as well. It, yes, it does have it's a It's actually ending. very, yeah. incredibly romantic. I mean, incredibly romantic, really touchingly romantic. Because towards the end of the book, perhaps it's your story, towards the end of the book, David meets a new person who may one day bring him orange juice. Could we... Uh... <laughs> But, uh, but it is, you, you speak very openly about uh, your love for the woman you're about to marry, Victoria Cohen. Y yes. Um, well, it's, it's sort of... I'm, I'm incredibly... I'm sort of weird and embarrassed and repressed talking about it, but it was, um, it, you know, it was an amazing thing to, to meet her. I've, I've not had many successful relationships in my life. You'd be amazed to learn. Um, <laughs> and so I thought that would probably be a state of affairs that would continue and I could console myself with the trappings of panel show stardom, you know, the, <laughs> the green room at Mock the Week, that sort of thing. Um, but so it was really, you know, it, it was more than, considerably more than I felt I deserved to, to meet her and just sort of literally fall in love within about, I, with, certainly within about 20 minutes. Wow. Um, <laughs> but then you found out that she was not available. Yeah, then she went out with someone else for about three years, um, which was a bit, a bit of a hitch. Yeah. But, um, but now it's, it's worked out and we're getting married. Wow. So, How lovely know. is that? Yeah. It's, just the lovely, it's the loveliest yeah. section to read. Yeah. Just before we say uh, goodbye for now, is um, I, uh, I was at someone's house a, a short while ago and David was there as a guest as well. And uh, at the end of the evening, uh, and this shows you what kind of rock and roll lifestyles we lead. <laughs> a table tennis table was produced, and we played some table tennis. And you would think to look at David that he's not a very sporty man. <laughs> and yet, he beat everyone in the place very comfortably at table tennis. You're like a table tennis prodigy. You're like uh, Forrest Gump or something. I mean, you play <laughs> table tennis fiercely and with a determination. I, I think what you mean is that I'm slightly better than you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you did beat me comfortably. Uh, is this a skill you've always had? I, I've always, I've always quite liked, I've always quite liked table tennis. Actually, I, that's that's actually one of the secrets that that isn't in the book. Um, <laughs> you no, know, I'm I'm all right at table tennis. It's it's better it's better than pool, isn't it? Well, we have a table tennis table here this evening. I don't know, <laughs> Bradley. Are you any good with the table tennis? No, but I'll give it a try. Okay, <laughs> Steve, Joe, you any good with the table tennis? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sounds to me like uh, there's a rock god challenge waiting for you. Right there <laughs> the the so at the end of the show, we have time. I'm going to get the table tennis table out. Please, no gambling. It's just for fun. And we'll see how good David really is. Okay. okay. David, and then... <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> okay. I had a dream about playing Aerosmith at table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Mr. David Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take another break. Don't go away. I'll be joined by two genuine rock gods, Aerosmith. Stephen Tyler and Joe Perry right here after the break.